Hey, how's it going? I got a quick video for you today. So I wanted to show you how to utilize event emitters to help decouple your code. And this is a pattern that you can use in really any Node.js app, but I'm going to show you how to do it in Nest.js specifically. So I have a simple Nest.js application here. I'll walk you through what I have here so far. So I just have a root app module. You can see that I have a controller and two providers. The controller is exposing a, a post, HTTP post route slash video, which triggers video service that publish. You can kind of imagine this sort of like if we were building the API for YouTube itself, right? When I publish a video, I want to notify you guys, the subscribers. So you can see that we have some mock code here of us publishing a video with a specific title. And then we want to trigger a notification to all of the subscribers, right? So in the viewer service that notify all that's doing is also logging out some code now right now we don't have much here we publish and we notify and it's pretty simple however think of a scenario where you start to have more requirements to uh, other things you want to do after a video is published or during its publishing right so for example besides notifying the viewers maybe we want to uh, email the content moderators maybe something needs to happen to enable ads on the video and you can kind of imagine how this code will just keep growing as we have more and more requirements to happen upon publishing a new video. And you can see how you start to create this uh, coupling of dependencies. Because for example, here in order for the publish method to call video service at notify, right, it needs to add this dependency. And from Nest.js's perspective, if this was in a different module, right, it'll need to add it to the providers array. And that's going to have to happen for every single one of these. Like imagine these were all coming from different modules, different services. All of those modules needs to become a dependency of the module that contains video service. All right. So I hope you can kind of imagine where the coupling starts to happen, where uh, the video service needs to be aware of all these other things. And similarly, all the people that are developing these other methods needs to know that, oh, they need to add it in this specific published method. And they also need to make sure that they don't break anything in here as they're adding more code, right? So I hope you sort of understand the high level problem that we're trying to solve is really we need to reduce the coupling between all of these and the publish method. And a simple solution to this problem is that instead of us calling these things directly, what we're instead going to do is we're just going to emit an event that says, hey, I published a video. And the rest of our services are going to subscribe to that event so that they can do their own work separately in a different part of the code base. So the way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to install the Nest.js event emitter package. Now, just to give you some quick context on what that package is, it's really just a light wrapper to the event emitter 2 package, which what that is, is an implementation of the internal event emitter that you can find in Node.js itself. The core difference is that it's supposed to be more performant. But basically, if you're trying to further understand how this all works, I recommend looking at the event emitter package documentation and then also using the internal Node.js event emitter documentation. There's also some good information there because again, this is an implementation of that. Anyways, after you do install the Nest.js event emitter, we are going to go into the app module and add that as an import here. So make sure to add event emitter module that for root from the Nest.js event emitter. Let's quickly run our application just to see how it performs today without the changes. So you can see that once our application is running, if we do a post request to localhost 3000 slash video hit send, you should see our response all done. So in our terminal, you should see those logs publishing a new video and notifying subscribers. So at this point, what we need to do is basically refactor our code to start using event emitters. So instead of us calling the viewer service directly, we are instead going to add the event emitter, which allows us to delete all the code that was in here before. And we can simply do this that event emitter that emit video dot created. You can also pass in some kind of payload if you need to pass some kind of DTO from your publisher to your subscribers. So for example, let's maybe pass in our title here. We can then switch over to our viewer service and we're going to turn this into something that listens for those events. So we're going to do on event from Nest.js event emitter and we're going to pass it in the same string 
that we're listening to. So we're going to do video.created. Remember, we're emitting video.created with an object like this. So that means we should also turn this into some kind of payload with a string title. And at this point, we should be able to go back to our request. Let's do another send here. And you can see that we pretty much have the exact same result as before where we're logging publishing a new video from publish. Eventually, it gets to notify and it's logging this part, which is notifying subscribers. Now, earlier we talked about how in this publish code, we had to you know call a bunch of functions. We no longer need to do that. If we were, for example, needed to do something else besides just notifying subscribers, you can instead add another listener that has the exact same event as this one. So as just another example, let's say that we had do something here and we again added another on event here of the same event, right? Let's just add another simple log here. Let's do another send on our publish. And you can see that it just added it in here. And one important thing to understand here is that when you emit events like this, it's not necessarily a synchronous. It's actually synchronous by default, even though they're events, you might think of them as a synchronous. But this is really equivalent to, you know, imagine we had an array of registered event handlers for this specific event, right? And it's really just going through that array and taking each function and just calling that, right? So that's really what's happening here. That's the mental model that you need to have where really things are going to get executed in the same order that those handlers are registered, right? So in our code here, you can see that this is logging out first and this is logging out second, right? So for example, let's add one and two here just so you can see it clearly. When I hit send, you can see that it's publishing a video and then one, two, right? So it's running in the order that it's registered. If I reverse these, like if I just move the code down like this, you can see that now it should do two, one. And by the way, if it helps understand this a little bit better, here's the docs from the Node.js site itself where they say event emitter calls listeners synchronously in order in which they were registered. It ensures that proper sequencing of events helps avoid race conditions and logic errors. If you did want to switch that to be in asynchronous mode, you can use set immediate or process.nextSick methods within the handlers. Now for the event emitter package specifically, you can see that their emitter.on actually takes an options object. And one of the options you can pass in there is async, which says invoke a listener in async mode using set immediate. So it basically kind of does that for you. And where you can pass these options is within this decorator itself. So you can pass an object in here for example, you can do async true, and that effectively is equivalent to wrapping this call in set immediate. So make sure to check the official docs here to understand what are the different options that you can enable. Now, one last thing that I wanted to quickly show, notice that when we do this type of calling, you sort of disconnect the, uh, the publisher to the subscribers. But what happens if the publisher also needs information from the subscribers? Like imagine if we had something to return in here, like let's return, uh, let's just do a number, right? Turn one and return two. What if I want to get back these values in our dispatch here? What you can do is switch this to emit async. And you can see that this returns a promise. So we need to take this publish method and turn it into an async. And we're going to await the result of this. Now, what you should expect this result to be is that imagine that this code that we had here before, if we were to switch this to a map, right? So for each handler, we're going to, we're going to call the function that is underneath that handler. And it's going to, this is going to return something. And then imagine that we wrap this in a promise dot all, right? So because we're mapping, we're getting back an array of all the things that this returned. And that effectively is what we're getting back in our result. So let's go ahead and log our result. Let's call our video route again, hit send. And you can see that we did one, two, and then we got back an array of one and two, right? Again, that's if your publisher needs something back from the subscribers, that's sort of how you can communicate back to the publisher. Now, one last thing before we end this video, one thing that you lose when you're simply emitting 
events like this is you kind of lose a little bit of the uh, IntelliSense, right? Like for example, how do we know that the payload is of this shape if it's if anything can be passed in here, right? And what I suggest doing is creating classes to represent those payloads. So for example, maybe let's create a new file and let's call this video created that event that ts and that could just be a simple class of same name video created event All right so let's do title string and it might be useful to add a simple constructor let's do this at title equals title and i have a small typo actually here this should be video created event all right and now we should be able to go to our emit code and we can switch this to be new video created event pass in the title All right so it'll look like that then we can just go to our subscribers and replace these to be video created event. And if we test our code one more time, it should behave exactly like before. Anyways, there you go. There's event emitters for you in Nest.js. Again, you can also use this in Express or any Node.js application. And it is important to understand that this is just a simple way to decouple things. There are other event-based mechanisms where, you know, perhaps you can publish to a queue in AWS, or you can also do pub sub with things like Redis, right? Let me know if you want to see videos about that. But anyways, hopefully you got something out of this video and hopefully it's useful to you. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.